Hi, I'm Carl Anderson, and I'm going to introduce you to CodeFluent Entities Windows Azure uh, Blob Storage support. So to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to open Microsoft Visual Studio 2010, and uh, we're going to create ourselves a new project containing blobs. So I'm going to use the CodeFluent Entities type, and instead of starting from scratch, I'm going to use the Media Management Sample model, which is a very straightforward model, uh, only containing a few entities and one of them is the journalist entity which contains a photo blob so I'm just going to show you the model so here it is and if we switch to the solar layout you can see that the central entity is the journalist one and among its properties uh, it has a photo property of the image type there so we're going to use this um, model to generate a simple media application and illustrate how uh, blob management is handled in CoFluent Entities. Alright, now that you're familiar with the model, I'm actually going to skip forward to uh, the exact same model as you can see, it hasn't changed. However, uh, here in my solution you can see that I have extra projects that were added to it. And among those projects, I got a, pers a database project which contains all my persistent scripts generated by CoFluent Entities, as well as my business object model, which is a set of C-sharp classes corresponding to my model. And then, on top of that, I have a very small console application here, which creates a new journalist if not in database, and then uploads a blob to the database and loads it. Please keep in mind that the only code that I wrote myself is the code contained in the program.cs class. All my persistence layer is generated by my SQL Server producer, which generated all those scripts, uh, which created my entire database schema. And then all my C-sharp classes are, were generated by my business object model producer here, which created all my uh, entity classes. So all I had to do is use that in my, uh, in my own console application here, which basically uh, creates journalists if if it does not exist already in database and then uploads a blob into that one uh, then loads it again and then opens it. So uh, let's take a look at, at my database. So I'm going to run this script, this little select all and as you can see my table is empty, I don't have any journalists so we're starting from scratch and here as you can see we're using the jellyfish picture, picture provided with uh, uh, with uh, Windows, so if we go there, see users, public, sample pictures, sample picture, this is going to be this one, the jellyfish.jpg one. So we're going to run the code, uh, I'm going to hit F5 there, and it's uploading, then loaded, and it opened. So if we go back to our management studio and run again the script, you can see that I have a new journalist that was created and that its blob was uploaded into the photo column. Okay, great. So this is standard blob support using CoFluent Entities. You can store those blobs without any extra work into your database. But now, what, what I want to do is actually store them into my uh, Windows Blob Azure storage account. So the first thing you need is that you need to have a storage account in Windows Azure. So here, as you can see, we have a CoFluent Azure uh, Cephalant01 storage account and what we're going to do is we're going to use that one to store our blobs so uh, before running the code in uh, on Windows Azure I'm going to use the Cloudberry storage account explorer and here you see that I'm connected to my Cephalant storage account and as you can see it's completely empty so uh, getting back to the code here we're without generating over nor changing a single line of code all I have to do is first uh, configure my application to use this storage account and so here I'm gonna uh, comment out the previous configuration and as you can see I'm still using the same connection string uh, using my local SQL Server instance to store my data. However, um, my instead of using the default binary services type, I'm using the Azure one, and I'm also setting up a uh, cloud storage account connection string, which points to my software account. 
So I'm going to save that one. As well, at runtime, you need to reference the Cofluent Runtime Azure, uh, which implements the Azure type binary services. As well as you need to reference the Microsoft Windows Azure Storage Client uh, DLL, which is used by the Cofluent Runtime Azure binary services. So here, if we go back to my code and then we launch it again, uh, it's going to be exactly the same, uploading the Bob, downloading it, and then opening it. But instead of using my database, it'll use the uh, uh, Windows Azure storage account. Okay, there we go. So getting back to CloudBerry here and uh, refreshing our UI, you can see that automatically Cofluent Entities created a, um, a blob container uh, named after my default namespace, which is Cofluent Media. And then from my entity for the blob property, you can see that I have a new instance there. And if we open it, you will we'll see our jellyfish, which is right there. And then here we go. Well, okay, this is it. As you've seen in this demo, uh, you can, uh, using Cofluent Entities, you can store your, your blobs either in your database or you can store them in your Windows Azure account. And this, without a single line of code, only uh, using the application configuration file and indicating which binary service you want to use, either the standard one in database or the uh, Windows Azure storage blob one. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.